A very good morning and thanks for clicking on to Bogan's European Outlook for Sunday the 30th of August. Very quickly approaching the month of November of course and the final month of meteorological autumn. This is the uh, sea surface temperature anomaly difference over the last seven days. And you can see here that we've had um, some um, fairly substantial cooling over the northern ocean basins. But in, in turn we've seen warming taking place over the Atlantic, uh, across the Pacific. And um, you know most noteworthy potentially is over the western portion of the Indian Ocean, northern uh, portion of the basin as well has seen significant warming taking place as well as uh, off the east coast of Australia. Now in today's video I want to kind of talk and look at the sea surface temperature anomaly globally over the course of this year so far. Um, it's uh, you know it's overall warming as we push through the summer season of course which was incredibly warm and now we're starting to see these little subtle changes taking place as we see uh, as we approach the the second half of autumn into the winter time this is the sea surface temperature profile for back at the beginning of this month uh, warm core over the northwest pacific also we've uh, got almost a mirror image over the northwest atlantic as well and these two areas of warm water I'm kind of paying a, a bit of close attention to actually as we go later down the roads here. Notice here the actual anomaly here despite the, the warming taking place over the uh, past seven days in the western portion of the Indian Ocean. We're still seeing a negative IOD signal here cool to the west and warm to the east. La Nina ongoing as you can see. But we are starting to see some slight changes taking place. If we look at the sea surface temperatures for um, September, uh, so we're going, of course, back in time, and these warm pools were very, very significant indeed uh, back during the, the September time frame. And then, of course, as you go through uh, August, um, we had an interesting strip of cool uh, between the Azores and uh, the Canary Islands here extending all the way to the Caribbean. Uh, notice here the core of the warmth actually was uh, directly south of the Aleutians. It's kind of uh, shifted west um, as we've progressed through the second half of the summer season. And then of course as you go back towards the spring season uh, we had um, an interest in um, horseshoe of cold over the North Pacific and uh, the La Nina. Uh, we had a somewhat cool northwest atlantic and of course if you remember back we had uh, some fairly cold weather back during the spring season especially across north america hence why i think we've seen the cooling taking place uh, here this is back at the start of the year by the way and the actual this is this is the problem that we had because back at back last winter the sea surface temperature profile was actually looking pretty decent now yeah we didn't have necessarily a tripole of warm cold warm over the north atlantic which can sometimes um you know increase the possibility of a, a negative north atlantic oscillation but this uh, cool um over the gulf of alaska warm north pacific of course la nina and uh, a warm um, southern portion of the pacific uh, this in in a sense looked pretty favorable when it came to um, some high latitude block. And like I say, granted we didn't have the uh, the, the tripo over the Atlantic, but it certainly did look uh, reasonably decent. Now this is the current sea surface temperature profile. And like I say, you can see here that the warm core over the Pacific has shifted slightly closer to Asia. We're starting to see cooling taking place along the, the, the East Asia coast. As you can see here, a little bit of strong warming here to the north of Australia, which is interesting. We're seeing warmth, but it's now getting stacked up a little bit more across North America. We're seeing a cooling over the Azores. That, by the way, is a direct response, I believe, to the um, cyclogenesis that we've seen in, in the last couple of weeks. Remember, um, the, the blocking over, interesting enough, this warm water. Systems coming down, of course, the strong block over Europe meant that we had air getting dropped into a trough that was centered over the Azores. 
that then um, produced the like um, cyclones to develop, and then of course they ran north northeast uh, to the w generally to the west of the British Isles, uh, allowing the warm flow up into the British Isles, which has led to one of the warmest uh, October's on record. So I, I do think overall my ideas for both September and uh, for October has played out quite well. So the golden question is going to be what uh, do we see during the month of November? That brings me on quite nicely because it's going to be interesting to see the type of pattern that I think we are going to see during the month of November or certainly at least the first half I think will be a neutral NAO, positive AO signal here. So we're going to start to see west to east flow systems riding across the Atlantic uh, aboard the jet stream, bringing plenty of wet weather. This is the total accumulated precipitation. And you can see here a lot of wet weather. And uh, this has got the classic uh, firm Atlantic driven pattern written all over it, uh, where you can see here, especially along the western side of the British Isles in Ireland, we're going to see rain totals mount up quite significantly here. So this is just purely looking at this map here tells me that the modeling is indicating a fairly uh, trophy zonal west to east flow uh, from pretty much, if not North America, certainly over the Northwest Atlantic and systems will fairly frequently pass across the British Isles. So we're going to see increased rain totals across the British Isles. Remember what I've said? Joe Bastardi over the years has said where the heaviest rainfall sets up during the autumn, particularly mid and late autumn. Remember October, November 2009, as well as 2010. Remember the winter that followed that. We're seeing increasingly wet conditions across the western half of the European continent. That is quite interesting. But what I'm, I'm getting at here is we are going to start to see with this type of pattern winds increasing across the ocean surface and weather, localized weather, has a significant uh, involvement in, in the, dictating the type of, of, of uh, sea surface temperature anomaly. You go back, you only have to go back to the summer season, August 1st, warm waters across the North Pacific, across the North Atlantic, and we had very warm land masses surrounding this. You can see here that uh, this was back in on the 1st of September. Tremendous amounts of heat built up to the up against and close to the, the Asia coast, up against and close to the North American uh, portion of the Atlantic Basin. And right now, we are seeing cooling taking place over the Azores, directly linked to the type of weather pattern that we've had in the last couple of weeks. Now, if we play through this peak wind gust forecast off the GFS, you can see where the strongest winds are going to be, uh, are predicted to blow. And they will be primarily focused um, in and close to Ireland and the, the British Isles here. But notice as I play through this loop, we see a uh, strongest wind gusts um, affecting a large swathe of the North Atlantic here, generally in a kind of west to east orientation my point that I'm trying to make is, do we start to see uh, cooling taking place? Do we start to see the, the removal of this very, very warm water to the south of Greenland because we have more zonal flow? We've got a stronger jet stream. We've got areas of low pressure riding that jet stream and blowing across the surface, forcing the upwell of cold waters from deep below up to the surface. And essentially... What I'm getting at here is, do we start to see a cooling here over the central Atlantic? So warm, cold, warm. Do we potentially, with this type of pattern, during at least the first half of November, if not all of November, start to see an Atlantic tripole developing? And that could be critical for the early portion of the, the, the winter season. Like I said in, in, in the last video and, and previous times, Man Julian oscillation possibly going to start to see an, uh, an increase in convection over the west portion of the Pacific. That in turn downstream could lead to some sort of, of blockiness mid and late month. So we need to keep an eye on that. But um, 
it's going to be interesting to see what type of temperature profile we get to by the time we reach the 1st of December. And then, of course, it's all eyes on the winter season overall. Like I say, overall, I think the winter, my hunch is that it's going to be a warmer than normal winter. Based on the, the, the past 10 years or so, with increased ocean warmth, um, particularly so across the northern ocean basins, land masses have there, therefore warmed. But it's also interesting that um, if we can start to cool the, the Gulf of Alaska, uh, that would be a favourable thing as well. When you've got very warm waters, and we had this in 2013-14, one of the greatest winters for a long time over the North American continent, that warm water boosted high pressure over Alaska, sending frequent shots of Arctic air down into the United States. But in turn, that then led to a stronger than normal jet stream neutral to positive North Atlantic oscillation across the Atlantic. And we had one storm after another battering Ireland and the British Isles. So if we can start to see cooling taking place over Alaska, that can change the overall equation of the atmosphere here. So these are things that I'm looking at, and it's interesting to see the difference in fluctuation in the sea surface temperature anomaly profile as we've went from the 1st of January through the summertime, and now we're moving into the second half, or well into the second half of autumn. Where do we stand a month from now, and therefore what takes place? Of course, you can have a very warm Atlantic, and you can have a very cold winter. Uh, it's not a case of just a warm uh, Atlantic means a, a warm winter. I know that. Uh, and it, we could see some incredible blocking, incredible cold. And I think another good thing is to remember as well is if we can start to peel away at some of this warmth, especially to the southwest of the British Isles, therefore we may not have as much chance of seeing an enhanced Azores high to the south of the British Isles because of course if you had very warm waters off Iberia or up against Iberia up against the British Isles as well sometimes that can lead to above normal pressure and a stronger than normal Azores high too close to the UK keeping the cold at bay and I think if we can focus the warmth uh, towards the western portion of the Atlantic Basin of course you don't want to have a block and high too far west over the Atlantic because what can end up happening is you have the block and high uh, closer to North America. You have the trough, yes, but therefore you have a ridge downstream of that too close to the to the British Isles here. But if we can cool off these waters to the southwest of the British Isles uh, during the month of November, and we are seeing that now based on the pattern that we've just had, that therefore could mean more trough focusing uh, over this region here. Uh, and blocking across the top here. I think we're going to see a very interesting back and forth type winter this year. So there's more winter thoughts for you to think about. Please drop a comment. Let me know what you think. And, um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens when all is said and done. So sitting here from a rather rainy uh, Perthshire, I'm parked up in a lay-by on the A9 so you probably hear um, the cars and trucks passing me in the back backdrop. It's nothing mysterious or anything like that. Um, so, but yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Please like, share, and if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.